Hello and welcome to this new video in the Azure Data Factory playlist. In this video, we will see how to copy incremental data with multiple tables in Azure SQL database. Let's get started. Before we proceed, I would like to remind you or suggest to watch the previous video so that you understand how the incremental load happens on a single table. Incremental load can also be termed as delta load because delta is nothing but a difference between the source and the target table wherein the newer data is copied. First, some base thing that we need to do. So I have already created the scripts because this video is going to be longer. So keep that in mind and I don't want it to be more longer by writing these statements manually. So pause the video wherever you need to and create the script step by step. Do not watch the video and then, uh, you know, you would want to practice. Go along with the video, pause it so that you do not need to watch the video again and again. So I have set up the uh, the scenario in such a way that we are going to have three tables products sales and orders firstly create the tbl product source the replica of the same will be the target table then insert the data and then let us query i have already executed these scripts so the source has data target is empty similarly the next set of table will be sales table in this again tbl sales source replica is same for target Again, insert into source. Let's query. So as you can see, sales target uh, source side, we have data target is empty. Finally, we have orders table. Again, order source, orders target same. Insert the data and then we have the query. So just wanted to save time. Hence, I have not written these scripts while recording the video. Now, what we have to do is we are going to store all of this mapping information into a table called as watermark table and we'll read that information into our pipeline so let's first create that table so let's say watermark table so this is how it would be create table tbl underscore watermark bracket open close i'm not including id column for this if you want you can do with primary key and identity the first thing that I want is I want to store source table name. Let's say where care of 100 comma. Then I'll copy this. Paste. I also want to store the target table name. Now why we need these information you will understand because these will be eventually used somewhere or other in the queries and the pipeline. Next, what we want is after this, we will also store some more information additionally like watermark column this will be where care let's say 50 then next we will store is watermark value this will be date time because it will hold a date next very important we will store source query this will be let's say where care of thousand pot time being because this will hold a SQL query so the number of characters would be more and finally we will store is active as one sorry is active as one or zero I'll make it as integer let's create done next thing is to insert so this is very important insert into TBL watermark values so firstly column names source table name target table name then we have watermark column watermark value source query and is active so i'll explain what of uh, what all these things mean to us let us insert the first record so the first thing what we'll do is source table name scroll up i will store this information tbl product source scroll down again single quote open close paste it now make sure that you're prefixing the schema currently since we are practicing this and i'm doing this within the same database i'm using the default schema which is dbo but in live projects or in production you will definitely have the schema like finance sales hr or any any other schema name whatever the business has chosen so you would need that name because you need to make sure that you're copying the table from the exactly 
uh, the the same schema that you want to or you are intending to then comma target table name scroll up and then again same dbo dot this comma the next is watermark column why do we need watermark column is because we will need this in the mapping dynamically the reason why you need to store here is you will understand the great benefit of it when we will develop and execute our pipeline and we want to make these things dynamic because the there are a number of tables that we are going to use in this example right now we are using three so definitely the column names in each of the tables will not the same so the watermarking concept is nothing but is that column on basis of which we are going to see what is the new incoming data that we need to copy so this column name will be different for each like for products table it is purchase date so this will be our watermarking column comma enter watermark value this is again important this will decide as to what uh, amount of data needs to be filtered in so this will be a date column as we have created currently what i'll do is i'll set this to any back date for which i know i don't have any data so all my dates uh, i know that data belongs to 2022 onwards so preferably set this backwards and this is only one time activity this column watermark value will be updated every time the pipeline runs through a stored procedure activity and we will use this as i will show you when we'll come to this next the very important is source query the source query is nothing but what we wrote in the previous video or the example what we saw is how to filter out so for that i'll scroll up copy this the first table paste here we'll say where the column that we need to filter is purchase date greater than open close bracket now where is this information stored what we are going to do is this watermarking table is going to serve a lot of purpose for us and help us it will also act as an audit table it will also act as a mapping table so in terms of mapping what we will do is when the pipeline will run we are going to update this value so what we'll do is we'll take this table and we will say i want to fetch only data only those rows from this table columns which you want that is your choice but it should filter in only the data which is new so how i will identify is i will say select from tvl watermark and what i will pull is i will pull this column watermark value because that will return us a date so i'll say select watermark from tbl watermark where the source table name is equal to this one and we can split this this way another thing is since we have prefixed the schema we got to do this over here dbo so what will this return this will return us the date so current date is 2021 but we'll keep on updating that so this will incrementally update it and then our pipeline will only pull the data from the source where the purchase date is greater than that date so by this way eventually we'll get only the new records i'll copy this now open close the quotes first paste this so now we know when we paste when we insert a text what happens is we enclose it into single quotes eventually what happens is those single quotes are taken away and the data is inserted so the same way i have done this but the another thing is within that query also there is a text which is enclosed in single quotes now this will be taken off as well so in order to preserve these single quotes i need to surround them by extra single quotes that's the simple explanation and don't just rack your brains behind it comma is active column should be set to one so that we can we are going to filter this is active would mean is just a flagging mechanism wherein if it's one i'm going to do the incremental load if i just update the statement and set the value to zero for this column we will not be incrementing it fine the next thing is then we will say comma i'll just copy this entire thing paste and now let us head over to the sales table 
scroll down just I'll double click paste target again here we are make sure you're following this correctly now in this sales the sales date column is there so we'll update this as watermark column the next thing is we need to modify the query which will be quite easy now I'll just copy this come in the sales category paste just replace the table names and then the column name so this is it copy come down very carefully what you will do is you'll select this entire block of query delete make sure you have single quotes only paste and then surround the single quotes over here as well in order to preserve them final thing one more record I'll copy this entire thing again paste remove the last comma because this is the last record and now the turn is for orders so order source table is copied then I'll copy the target then we have the watermark column as order date and then finally we got to prepare the query so I'll just copy the query from here either for sales or purchase what we had replace the tables then replace the column name copy this select this carefully again paste just bring this up again I'll surround this with single quotes so that's it we are ready now select this execute control R and then I'll say select start from TBL underscore watermark so this table is very important and any kind of mistake over here will eventually lead to our pipeline not being executing successfully so what are those mistakes you are missing out on the schema you are missing out the dot between the schema and the table name incorrect uh, table names incorrect column names not passing the correct watermark value and the query definitely needs to be correct is active anyways we are setting this to one so now we have this let's head over to the pipeline and read this data so what we are going to do is in order to read the contents of a file or a table we need lookup activity so let us call this as a read watermark details settings first thing we'll do is uncheck this first row because there are multiple rows that we want to read new data set pointing to SQL database Azure SQL database let us call this as DS read WM details WM means watermark or you can just choose any other name let's select the link service I'll not write the table select the table name since we are going to write the query over here why a query is because I want to filter out how let me just click on query and say select star from dbo dot this table name where is active column is equal to one so at times it may happen in future that we don't want to do incremental load on one or more than uh, one table due to any reason so we'll just hit an update statement as uh, set is active to zero for that particular table eventually what will happen that query will not return us that table and the incremental load will not happen so we would want to just debug and see how the data looks like although we know what this is going to return this should return us three records but still there you go the count is three and we have all those column names over here now we are going to use each of these column names in a dynamic way what I have to do is I have to loop over this so let me add a for each activity connect the output select for each and we can call this as copy each table settings hit the sequential checkbox add dynamic content now here we'll pass the activity output of the lookup which is nothing but what we have mentioned read watermark details as the name dot value okay 
let's come inside this so the first thing we have to do is copy data so let's bring in copy activity let's call this as copy incremental data source so create a new data set pointing to SQL database now keep in mind that our example is using the same database the only difference is if you're using two different databases your link services will be different so make sure you're selecting the source and the target link service properly let us call this as ds source inc multi link service table name we will not select because this is going to come through dynamically through the iterator of the for each activity so click on query in the last example we were manually passing the query over here but in this example what we are going to do is since we have stored the query into the table watermark table under the source query column name we are going to pass that so simply i'll click on add dynamic content click on the for each iterator dot and then we will say write in s control space source query remember for each will loop into every single output of the row of the lookup activity that will be nothing but an object which will contain multiple columns hence by just saying at the rate item is not sufficient because it returns you an object inside that object you will have multiple columns so you need to specify the column name this is done then we move on to sync again new data set needless to say why we are not using the same data uh, data set since we are pointing it to a different object altogether so ds sync multi inc let's select the link service table name will be again empty over here because this will be dynamic open the data set click on edit two things we have to pass the schema and the table name but the problem over here is if you click on add dynamic content you will not be able to access the for each iterator reason being we are inside the data set so the only solution as we have been using as a standard practice is click on parameters data set level we will create a parameter let us call this a table name table name click to connection and then we will split that table name now why split is because we want to we have to specify the schema and the table name separately because there are two different text boxes over here we have done this earlier as well so click on this parameter and I'll pass this parameter inside the split function. So split takes two arguments. The thing that you want to split is the table name and we'll split by dot. Once you split by dot, you will get an array. So in the square bracket, we will say zero. So the zero index will contain the lower item, which is nothing but the schema. And then upper click on add dynamic content in the next text box. The upper index will be one, which will contain the table name. Make sure when you're creating this table, inserting the data into TBL watermark, you're using dot as a separator and not any other separator. I mean, you can still use any other separator, but at some point in time, you will face issues while copying, etc. So it's better that we stick to dot. Go to pipeline. You will see in the sync. Now you have a table name property, a table name parameter to be passed before the below the data set Add dynamic content. So the table name that will pass is through current iterator dot target table name so the target table name is taken care of once this is done the data will be loaded successfully once the data is loaded we have to now do one thing we have to make sure that we update this watermark value because this was only for a one-time default once this is done the first run is done or rather let's say after every run this watermark column should be updated why is because now you will understand the entire circle if you look at the query here we are saying select watermark value which means this column this row from tbl watermark where source name is equal to order source so and then we are filtering that value by passing in the outside query so this value needs to be updated so what in in short it will do is it will take the max of this column which we'll do in a while and we are going to update it. The next time the pipeline will run, it will filter out the data which is on the source side, which is greater than this maximum value. So how we will do this is for this, we will have to write a stored procedure which will update the value. 
so let's create the stored procedure create proc or create procedure sp underscore watermark this will accept two things this is the column that we need to update but we also have to give some criteria so we can take target table name so let's say at the rate table name as parameter in this this is how you would add parameters to your procedure let's call this as 100 comma at the rate and then we can say max date this should be of the data type date time or date time 2 then as begin end now we will say update t wheel watermark set watermark value watermark value column is equal to max date enter where target table name target table name is equal to at the rate table name so excuse me for uh, the case I'm just writing it so this is done now once this is done we'll head over back to the pipeline now how can we update the maximum date in order to update we'll have to first derive it in order to derive it we'll have to query it so to query and fetch the value obviously we have one choice which is lookup let's join this let's call this as get new watermark value settings what we are going to do is make sure just keep the first row only as checked because this is going to be a single record and pointing it to SQL database let's call this as ds new vm wm and then here what I'll do is I'll not select any table because we have to write this query against each and every table okay now click on query this is what the most interesting part is and you should not get confused so click on add dynamic content the simple format that we have to follow is I'll show you a template we have to take a max of the date column from the target table so the column name and the target table this will be dynamic why because every time the loop runs it will bring a different table name so in order to do this what we'll do is the lookup activity and through the for each iterator we are getting these columns so what do we need we need the watermark column name this is why we stored that information and we need the target column name so all we will do is in this query I'll copy this now there are some important things that you have to remember so watch this carefully here what we have to do is we have to replace or write the column name so for each iterator is active over here click on the for each iterator I'll remove this at the rate from here now watch how I'm going to write this at the rate curly braces after item dot I want the watermark column name so the watermark column name will be passed over here close the curly braces this will give us the watermark column name from target table name so let us call this as target table name in this way so this will take care of it now in case what will happen is since this is going to be queried on the target side and for the first time the target table is empty so definitely this max value will be returned as null as we have seen in the last video and we need to make sure that we are also taking care of that scenario so I'll break this into multiple lines and use the is null function over here so if this is null then what it should return is it should get the default value which is nothing but what we can do is we can pass this anyway the default value of the watermark column is set to this so this is anyways happening for the first time simply what I'll do is I'll copy this paste and instead of this I can say watermark let's copy the name from here to be on safer side let's say watermark value and then close the bracket so watch this is a max function 
it will have its own opening closing bracket and this is the is null function which will have its own opening closing bracket and we'll call this as new water mark value that's it one more thing now what is going to happen is if the value is going to be null then it is going to return this so in this case what you'll have to do is observe how we inserted the date over here we enclose this in single quotes so here this is only going to bring you the date it will not bring the single quote so all you got to do is make sure your surrounding sorry this with single quotes in this way that's it so what this will do is it will give you the default date and it then the outside quotes will surround it okay once this is done then we will add finally a store procedure activity and don't get lost anywhere if you feel you're not getting it just wait for the execution we are almost there we'll call this as update watermark value go to settings select the link service click on refresh and then you can click on type in sp underscore watermark click on import to import the parameters the first thing what we will do is max date this will be the output of our lookup activity so let's scroll down here we will check for get new watermark value now this is since the first row is checked it will say we will say dot first row dot and what we said is new watermark value on that column just to be sure what we will do is quickly click on the lookup value copy this name and just come back over here and paste this so why first row because first row was checked eventually it is going to return only first row so have that just leave it that way table name so the table name is nothing but the target table name which will be returned by for each iterator dot and we can say control space target table name all right we are done now so let's come back and debug let's see how this pipeline runs successfully or not and then we'll understand this it took uh, definitely a longer time because the setup and etc it takes time that's why i saved those queries earlier itself so let's refresh let this entire set complete and we'll uh, just go through this step by step refresh still running i think the last table now and it should be still running almost there so we have made this pipeline uh, dynamic in almost every sense so we could execute just running yeah done so you see that now debug we can see the debug which means i don't see the cancel option so it does execute it let us see so the first activity lookup brought us three values fine because is active was set to one the first incremental load happened it copied five rows of data so the first thing uh, we will do is check the products target table let's execute this so we have five rows of data fine the next thing is it got the watermark table the max date which is 625 and then it updated so let's now come down to the watermark table now you'll see all the values might have been updated definitely so you see the products table now the most updated value 625 so every time the pipeline will run it will take the max after copy because first the copy needs to happen right and then it will take the max of that column through the lookup activity and through the store procedure it will update when the next time the value will be fetched it will be fetched on the basis of this itself 
further you see the next incremental load happened this also pyros and in the same way everything will be going further now what i'll do is quickly i understand uh, the video has already got longer but we have to test the functionality of whatever we have developed so i'm going to go into the products table and then insert a data over here let us take 7 which is july and i'll change some figures over here and let us insert this data along with this let us also test a functionality what wherein what i'll do is take this say update this table set is active to zero where source table name is equal to let's say i don't want to take the orders table so orders target let's hit this update okay this should be dbo dot this is what uh, we always miss so one row affected now query this execute so now you see is active is set to zero now eventually we are going to cover multiple scenarios so you will see only two rows are being fetched and how many tables uh, will be actually copied that remains to be seen so let us trigger the pipeline refresh click on this now you see only two tables this is where the is active comes into play because i didn't want to copy the other table so cool so we will have only products and sales but in real sense what is the incremental data the incremental data incremental data is only in the products table which should get copied so here you see only one row of data was copied and the value also has been updated now if i go back just to the products table select you see six rows in each one of them how about the next one here zero rows were copied why because there was no incremental data so even though the pipeline runs that's fine i mean it will take a few seconds to execute so this is how we've tried to cover the scenario in uh, almost every possible way and make it dynamic Let's say in future, if you have more tables on the pipeline side, you don't have to do any development in data factory. All you'll have to do is create your source target tables and importantly, insert record into TBL watermark. Make sure that is active and handle the active inactive as per your choice. So this is all about the incremental data load for multiple tables. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.